So I've gained quite a few new followers the past few days, and some of you might not agree with my username, Fittest Flat Earther. Yeah, it's not just your name I disagree with. I've just watched your video, and judging by your conclusions, I think fittest means he's fittest to wear a helmet with a chin strap. I kind of get the helmet, but what's with the water wings? So today I'm turning on my sarcastic switch, and we're going to use real proven physics to tackle this quadrillion mile problem. So if you like watching simple geometry ruin somebody's entire worldview, you're going to want to keep watching. Shut up and sit down, you big bald f***. Please subscribe. So I thought I'd show you some things, like me zooming in on Jupiter and its moons. I hate people who overuse air quotes. Look, I get it. You zoom in on Jupiter with your camera and you see those four little dots. Io, Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, all huddled right next to the big gas giant. And yeah, they look close enough to hug. Jupiter's closest major moon, Io, is about 422,000 kilometers away from Jupiter itself. That's already further than our moon is from Earth. Now, the fact that Galileo spotted these four moons moving around Jupiter over successive nights is precisely what proved that not everything in the solar system revolves around the Earth. And those those air quotes you just used are just a sad attempt to dismiss 400 years of proven astronomy that kicked the geocentric model right out of the solar system. Which are supposedly 500 million miles away and not creating their own light. They're reflecting the sun's light to us. Well, it varies, but with an average distance of 444 million miles, yes, yeah, pretty far away. So what? Space is huge. So that's not a conspiracy. It's literally just how the solar system works. And planets and moons in our solar system are called non-luminous objects. They do not generate their own light. They can only reflect the sun's light. He's trying to make a proven, really uncontroversial fact sound like a secret. But all he's doing is admit that he doesn't know the difference between a planet and a star. It's like being shocked that a mirror reflects light instead of power in itself. Get a grip, will you? Because sun reflecting off a ball can travel 500 million miles. Light waves travel through space in the same way, regardless of whether they came directly from the sun or whether they bounced off Jupiter. The 500 million miles is nothing for light. Light travels at about 186,000 miles per second. And that sunlight hitting Jupiter and then traveling back to his camera only takes about 43 minutes. That's it. If we can see Pluto, which is over 4.6 billion miles away, seeing Jupiter is the easy part. He's trying to make the distance sound impossible and then immediately dismissing the successful travel of light because it ruins his it's all close narrative. <laughs> I go over to the moon and a star under the moon with the same zoom. Funny how they're 500 million miles away. The moon is supposedly 238,000 miles away only. But this star... The star, which at the same zoom, it just looks smaller, but it looks like it's in the same sort of distance as the moon. The stars are really far away. When you look up, every single star you see, including the one you're highlighting, is light years away. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. Small, <laughs> far away. Guess how far this star is away? This star which looks like it's the same distance away as the moon. And it's called Tian Quan, and it's right here. Oh, so it's moved then, because the star you were talking about was below and to the left of the moon as you look up at it. Research much? I would say it's Zeta Tauri, which is part of Taurus, the constellation it lives in. And you'll never guess how far it is away. Tian Quan is 445 light years away, supposedly. Do you know how far a light year is? I do, yes, but a lot of people don't fully grasp just how far a light year is, which is exactly why flat earthers like you use the number to try and confuse people. It's a classic misinformation tactic. Use a real, massive number and pretend it's impossible. A light year is about 5.88 trillion miles. Now, I can't decide if this guy actually believes the things he's saying or if he's just in it for the giggles. Nobody can be this much of a pleb in real life life, surely. What do you think? A light year is six trillion miles away. A light year. 
six trillion miles away. So you need to take 445 light years times six trillion to get how far that star is supposedly away from us. Flat earthers just love the word supposedly, but what they don't seem that keen on is admitting when they're wrong. It's 2.67 quadrillion miles, so uh, pretty far away. So guess what? I did that. Six trillion times 445 gives you this crazy number. And when you plug that number to translate it into words, it's 267 quadrillion miles away. Hang on a second. No, it isn't. Only a flat earther could get the wrong answer using a calculator. If you actually do the multiplication he set up, the correct answer is 2.67 quadrillion miles. So he didn't just miscalculate. He was off by a factor of 100. That's not a rounding error. That's forgetting how many zeros are in the number. Even the correct number, 2.67, quadrillion is the entire point. That mind-boggling scale is precisely why we can't measure the star's apparent size with a zoom lens. The star is so distant that we can only see it as a point source of light, and the moon, which is relatively nearby, shows its actual shape. Not million, not trillion, quadrillion. But it looks like it's right there next to the moon. So your terrible hundred times wrong multiplication proves that the star is far away, but your eyeballs say it's close to the moon. See how that works? Or in your case, doesn't. When two objects are aligned in your field of vision, they appear to be near each other. It's just angular separation. The star and the moon are just separated by a very small angle from our perspective on Earth. They are not separated by a small distance. This is exactly like looking out of an aeroplane window and the, the distant actual sun looks like it's resting on a mountain nearby, but they just look like they're next to each other. The sun is actually 93 million miles away and the mountain is only a few miles away. The star and the moon are no different except the difference in their respective distances is 2.67 quadrillion miles. But not only that, do you know that the stars of Orion's belt have always for thousands of years aligned with the pyramids and they don't just align they were built based on the luminosities. The brighter the star, the bigger the pyramid. The stars in the sky appear to shift their position over millennia due to the slight, slow wobble of Earth's axis. The sky we see today isn't the same sky the Egyptians saw when they were building the pyramids. The closest it came to matching the pyramids' layout was around 10,500 BCE, roughly 8,000 years before the Giza pyramids were actually built. And the idea that they've always been aligned for thousands of years is just a barefaced lie. The brighter the star, the bigger the pyramid is also a bust. The pyramids decrease in size. The stars of Orion's belt from west to east have varied brightness. The star Mintaka, corresponding to the smallest pyramid, is actually dimmer than the other two stars. I think he plans it all out. Just makes it up as he goes along. Yeah, he makes it up as he goes along, definitely without any shadow of a doubt. <laughs> but there's more with stars. Do you know the North Star, Polaris, sits right there, never moves, and all the stars circle around it, almost like the stars are rotating around a center point. Ah, right, so he thinks it's a mystery that the North Star, Polaris, sits right there while every other star circles it. But Polaris is literally one of the proofs that we live on a rotating sphere. Polaris only appears to stay still because it just happens to be lined up almost perfectly with the Earth's rotational axis. Think of it as the hub of a wheel. The visible rotation of every other star around it is actually a beautiful illusion caused entirely by the fact that we're rotating. It's a fundamental truth that would be scientifically impossible if Earth were a stationary flat disk. Well, everything would be impossible if the Earth were a flat... It doesn't matter. You were saying? I want to ask you to seriously think about this. How could the North Star always be in the exact same place? And how could the stars of Orion's belt always align with the pyramids year after year after year for thousands of years when the Earth is doing supposedly eight different motions, all in different directions and angles? 
Hmm, so what you're saying then is that you have absolutely no clue what you're talking about. And as far as the North Star goes, it isn't always in the same place. It moves, but so do we. We already know we are wrong about the pyramids. The stars do not and have not aligned with them since thousands of years before they were built. And yes, the Earth does have multiple motions, but the stars are so ridiculously far away, quadrillions of miles, remember? That the small movement of our solar system makes practically zero difference to the star's field appearance over a few years. What you're saying is like saying, why isn't the tree in my garden moving with me when I walk across a room? <laughs> Things are revolving around us, like we're at the center of creation. Not since the 16th century, pal. The geocentric model was debunked hard by Copernicus, Galileo and Kepler. And again, with the luminaries in the sky, not the burning balls of gas 93 million miles away, how is it that the moon wouldn't be lit all the way when it has a direct angle? Like, a direct angle. Oh, Slavvir Naur. The moon is always half lit by the sun, just like the Earth, because it's also a ball. <laughs> oh, dear me. We see a crescent moon when the moon is mostly turned away from us, meaning we can only see a small curve of its lit side. And the reason we can sometimes see it during the day is because, wait for it, we live on a sphere and the moon orbits that sphere. <laughs> oh. Just maybe, like the Bible says, there were two great lights, the lesser light to rule the night and the greater light, a.k.a. the sun, for the day. No! Now look, the Bible is great. <laughs> But it's not an astrophysics textbook, is it? Yeah, the text describes two great lights, the sun, which was the greater, the moon, the lesser, blah, 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 which is a perfect description of their function for people on Earth. But science has moved on from simple observation. We know the moon. We've even been there. His beloved lesser light is actually just a giant rock reflecting the light of the greater light, or the sun as we now know it. And if his lesser light theory were true, the moon would generate its own heat and light. Don't start flat earth as I've seen the videos. No. The sun is massive. It's a thermonuclear furnace. And the moon is its passive, reflective sidekick. The moon's light is literally borrowed from the sun, which is 93 million miles away, which is the expected scientific proof that his two separate light model fails to account for. <laughs> I don't know why I put that in there, it just made me laugh. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget on Saturday at 7.30pm UK time, I'll be uploading the next video essay, which is, uh, oh, it's a really good one, and I really hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to like the smash button before you leave, and I will uh, see you next time. Love you, bye. Out of everything that's on the internet, this is the best thing. <laughs> My doctor thinks I have a preoccupation with revenge. <laughs> we'll soon see about that. <laughs> I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gone.